Look at you. How are you, sir? Are you well? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm happy to be here with you. I am so happy that you're here, and I'm incredibly happy because, and I think people would be shocked to know this, this is your first ever television interview. That's true. I, 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 it's, it's, it's unavoidable, James, and I've really just been waiting for you to call. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this, this is my first ever television interview. It might be my last, no, so it no pressure. <laughs> I, no don't, pressure. I don't think it will be your last, because I've got to say, just on this alone, I love talk show Jeremy Strong. Don't you? Yeah. The look is strong. <laughs> and I'm so happy that you're here, and genuinely, because we met before, uh, we met at the Emmys last year, and I badgered you and told you what a huge fan of Succession I was, and I said to you, I remember saying to you, you wait. Next year, I'm telling you now, and you, of course, were very humble and said, I don't know. And then last month, there we go, you win Best Actor at the Emmys for Succession, and it was absolutely richly deserved. It really, really was. <laughs> like, I cannot tell you how great that show and your performance is. But I'm interested to know what it was like for you, because obviously the nominees were zooming in from all around the world. I don't know if there'll ever be another... Emmys like it. What, tell us about the moment when you heard your name called out and you realised you won. What was that like? It was... Uh, I, I think... You know, I was a bit amazed, to be honest. Um, there's so much, as you know, just incredible work on television right now. And, you know, in, in the category that I was in and, and, and you know, everywhere on television. So, so... You know, uh, it was it was a uh, sort of it was an amazing moment, uh, and 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 a bizarre way of it happening. Yeah, because um, I sort of felt like you didn't have that. Any of the people who won didn't have the sort of fifteen or twenty seconds to gather themselves and walk up to the stage and give a trophy. It was like you won. Speak now. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, you, you, I could have really used that 30 seconds walk <laughs> up to the podium to sort of assemble myself a bit. But, you know, what was kind of wonderful about it was how intimate the whole thing became. Sure. Uh, you know, my, my, my wife and my friends were in the next room and, uh, you know, there was the dude in the hazmat suit in the, in the hallway <laughs> with, with the Emmy and he handed it to my wife and she brought it in. And, you know, when, when is that going to happen? Yeah, that you're right. It's an amazing way to, to look at such an evening. And the last season of Succession, which uh, was my favourite show on TV last year, and it ended on such a cliffhanger, particularly for your character. And I know that you were due to go back to shoot earlier in the year and it obviously got shut down. How frustrating has this break been between seasons? And do you even know when you're going to be back shooting the show? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be back in a few weeks, <gasps> I think, you know, soon. It's imminent and, it, and, it, and it's looming and, uh, and I'm ready. And, you know, it... it, it uh, listen, it was... Last year was a heavy... It was a heavy season for me. It was a for lot sure. of weight to carry. Yeah. So I was sort of indescribably relieved to put it down for a while. Uh, I've got two small girls um, and it was really ended up being a gift to have a lot of time to spend with them, uh, more time than, you know, than, than, than I would have otherwise had. And so, you know, going back, you know, each season, it's, it's, it's a bit like a video game where, you know, first season is a certain level and you have to beat the boss at the end. And, sure. you know, the next season you're at level two and the monster's a different monster. And so, you know, we're going into the third season. And I think it's a bit like, uh, you know, the shackles are off of... Of, of me and uh, and uh, it's sort of Kendall unbound so now, so I'm excited do you have to get back into like a Kendall frame of mind do you start just sitting in the back of ubers listening to rap music and punching seats and you know, things funny you should say that James but today I was actually walking around Williamsburg listening to uh, Magna Carta Holy Grail listening to the Jay-Z album and I kind of put my toes back into it for the first time. I felt it. <laughs> you felt Kendall coming back through yeah. the Holy Grail. Now, you yeah. mentioned your children, your family. You um, spent the first half of the year in a small village in Denmark. 
when lockdown happened. What were you doing there? Tell me about it. What was the experience like over there? Well, my wife is half Danish, and uh, her family's over there. And, you know, we, we, we spent a lot of time there. We were married there. My, my first daughter was born there. And, you know, I, I, I love it there. I try and spend as much time as I can. I find it to be a very gentle, peaceful, uh, uh, calm place. And um, so we were there uh, living in Copenhagen. And then, and then when the pandemic came, we, we moved out to this little fishing village on the coast about an hour north of Copenhagen. And we just kind of kicked it there. So what goes on in this small village? What were you doing while we were all sort of locked down just eating pints of ice cream? What do you do over there? You know, it's this beautiful town. There's kind of miles of wild sand dunes and a big birch forest called the Troll Woods. Uh, so, so we took walks in the woods and um, I don't know, man. It's a pretty, li it's kind of like life in the slow lane a little bit yeah. there. Don't in, they do, in, in it's literally way. life. Isn't it literally life in the slow lane? Don't they do snail racing in the small village that you're in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. It's actually a thing. Uh, did you, you know, compete? Yeah, I did. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty competitive. And so what, what you do is, you know, you use some of that colored chalk. Yeah. And you make some lanes. There's usually two or three, sometimes four, depending on how many kids you get together to race the snails. Uh, you have to go after it rains because that's when the snails come out in, in the woods. And then you get a snail and you line them up and, you know, uh, and the grown-ups kind of honestly just kind of stand around and drink. Um, <laughs> there's, you know, you drink snaps in Denmark. It's, right. it's called yeah. snaps. Yeah. And I actually found that if you poured some snaps at the end of the track, you right. know, the far end of the track, it actually kind of was a catalyst uh, for the snail. But is that, is to, that, I don't know, know if that's considered you. doping. We should look into that, Reg. Yeah, yeah, I'll... You look into that as right soon now. as you can. That would be great. Now, Jeremy, let's talk about the trial of the Chicago 7, which is your, your new film on Netflix based on a true story. For anyone who hasn't caught it yet, tell them what it's about and who you play. Uh, Trial Chicago 7 is about these protests that happened in Chicago in the summer of 1968. Protesters converged on Chicago uh, to protest the Vietnam War and to protest the Democratic Convention. So the film is about these protests and uh, uh, the, the subsequent police riots um, that happened and the trial that followed uh, in 1969. You know, we, f we filmed the movie, I play Jerry Rubin, who, who was a kind of fiery uh, radical uh, and a bit of a merry prankster and, uh, you know, a provocateur and, and a trickster. And, and we were filming in Chicago last October, right around now. And, uh, you know, we were, we were marching down Michigan Avenue, chanting, no justice, no peace chanting, the people united will never be defeated. And, you know, we would have never known uh, that over the past few months, we'd be out on the streets of this country chanting those same things. Uh, it's, it's upsetting uh, because it kind of shows how far we haven't come, but, uh, but, 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 but I think incredibly powerful. It really is. It's, it's worth anybody's time watching it. And your performance, as all your performances are, is, is absolutely...